three survival horror games, three blonde teenage protagonists, three legacies of being underrated, overpriced, and hard to find. All of them on PS2. I'm Pliskin, and welcome to episode one of Plicktober. This year, we're going to be talking about some of the most legendary PS2 survival horror games that are a nightmare for game collectors. We're going to talk about how eerily similar they can be, despite coming from three different companies and being made by three different, very different development teams. And at the end of the day, we're going to talk about whether or not these games are really worth it for their price, for their legend that surrounds them, or if they're just kind of overrated games that are just, you know, held up by boomers. So this is Pliskin and welcome to week one of Plicktober. We're gonna start this the same way we started it last year, with Silent Hill 3. Silent Hill 3 was released in 2003 by Team Silent working under Konami. Some of the notable names is of course Akira Yamaoka, known for his legendary work on the Silent Hill soundtracks. However, for this game here, he was not only the composer, but also the producer. You had Yukinori Ojima, who was the programmer, Masahiro Ito, who of course is the designer for all the monsters, and Hiroyuki Owaka as the writer. Originally, Silent Hill 3 was planned as a low-budget rail shooter due to Silent Hill 2's poor sales in Japan. Team Silent remained true to form and pushed out a critical success, despite initial pushback from Konami executives. This game was developed at the same time as Silent Hill 4. Therefore, the team working on Silent Hill 3 was significantly smaller than Silent Hill 2's team. While most of the reception was positive, critics shared my gripes of the controls, the combat, and the lack of innovation on previous entries. The basic premise of Silent Hill 3 is that Harry Mason and his daughter Cheryl Mason, who escaped the cult in Silent Hill 1, are now pursued many years later. Here you play as Cheryl Mason, who's going under the name of Heather in order to hide better from the cult. However, one day while she's out, the cult finds her, and all of the Silent Hill shenanigans that we've come to expect throughout the series starts occurring around her. Heather has to traverse seemingly normal locations that slowly devolve into nightmare realms, discovering that she might be the cause of all of these horrific changes. So the game has you fighting as Heather against the cult through these locations, making your way to Silent Hill and stopping this whole cycle once and for all. The gameplay can be divided into three different pieces, combat, puzzles, and exploration. The puzzles are definitely the strongest part. Depending on the difficulty you put it on, it can be as easy as just walking through the game, or having to know your Shakespeare in order to get past the first level. The exploration can be very hit or miss. Some areas are definitely much more interesting than others. I always hold up Brookhaven Hospital as one of the worst designed areas, because it's just a series of rooms, a series of floors, and a series of hallways with locked doors. Now I understand that like, you're trying to make realistic environments, and therefore, you know, you would find locked doors and rooms that don't really have anything for you, but I'm a firm believer that when you're making a game, game design and gameplay should come first. The combat is incredibly simplistic and can be pretty boring. There are some enemies that move around a bit more and require you to move around and reposition, but the majority of the time it's just going to be a mindless bashing of you or the enemy, broken up by some shooting or that kind of stuff. Your first playthrough with the combat is going to be pretty boring. However, where Silent Hill 3's gameplay really starts to shine is with its unlockables. You can get a lightsaber, you can get a flamethrower, an infinite ammo machine gun, there's tons of new outfits to unlock, hell, there's even a costume unlock that has its own equip animation. Is it worth it?
You tell me. While none of these unlockables really change the fact that the gameplay is incredibly simplistic, and that the exploration is very hit or miss with the levels, it does give you a reason to come back because there are more things to explore and experience, and they can be pretty fun. And a lot of these unlockables kind of streamline the gameplay by killing enemies a hell of a lot easier, allowing you to focus more on the puzzle elements, which again is the major strength of this game. Just generally, there's tons of stuff to find, and while some items might not really seem important for anything, keep in mind that not only is this a game with unlockable items, weapons, and costumes, but also a game with unlockable endings, so pick everything up, try everything out, and see what the game throws at you. Silent Hill 3 will surely surprise you for the better. But enough about just describing the game, let's get into a little bit of analysis. The legend versus the reality. So first off, is this legendary survival horror game scary? My answer is a very strong yes. I have never been more scared playing a game. Now, it's not the kind of fear where I'm constantly jumping out of my chair. However, when I play Silent Hill 3 for extended periods of time, and then finish and turn off my PS3 console, I will sit there and think twice about turning off the lights on my way back upstairs. I will check my back while walking through the dark to get to my room. And I will generally feel pretty goddamn uncomfortable in my house. You see, Silent Hill 3 has a way of subverting the normal. It takes things that would make you comfortable. You know, like a mall, uh, your home, apartment buildings, simple places that we all go and we all experience, and it contorts them into something very warped. So when you're walking through these places in real life afterwards, and it's quiet and you're alone, you feel a lingering sense of terror. Some of the most disturbing sights, sounds, and moments you'll ever experience in a game happen in Silent Hill 3. I cannot stress enough that this game is terrifying. The second question is, is it fun? Well, Silent Hill has always had really high peaks and really low valleys. So for Silent Hill 3, those peaks are definitely the narrative, the unlockables, the weird wacky easter eggs to find, the scares, the atmosphere, the vibes, the liminal spaces, but the gameplay and the repetitiveness of, you know, those kind of encounters, the plethora of locked doors, just really drag the game down. So it's fun sometimes, but there's a good chunk of the time where it can be very frustrating and I'll just want to put down the game for a month or maybe even a year before I come back to it because I have to be in the mood to deal with the things I don't like to experience the things I do like. In regards to the vibes, this is another major strength. I already talked about the horror vibes, but like Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 1, you get these very kind of ethereal, peaceful vibes. So, for example, you can listen to the music in some sections where it's supposed to be hopeful or it's supposed to be a little brief moment of respite, or something is happening in the story and you're meeting a new character. Something as simple as meeting one of the game's characters, who you don't know if they're a protagonist or an antagonist, an ally or an enemy, and you'll just have Akira Yamaoka going sicko mode in the background with this. So Harry didn't tell you anything. I guess he hid the truth keep you on his side. <laughs> that figures. Uh-huh. He is a pretty sneaky guy. Don't talk about my dad like that! Sorry. I apologize. Please, calm down. How do you know my father anyway? But then in regards to those horror vibes, even something as simple as saving, which in survival horror is usually something that makes you feel, well, safe, save rooms. Here in Silent Hill 3, you go to save and you just get greeted by this. So 
So whether it's like a chill Y2K kind of like mood groove kind of vibe, or if it's just straight up horror, Silent Hill 3 delivers on the vibes. Is this game replayable? Absolutely. The lightsaber, the costume, the unlockable endings, it's definitely worth going through at least two to three times. Your first time you just go in blind, your second time you mess around with a lot of the unlockable items, and you know, maybe look up guides to how to get certain things, and then your third time is just about playing around with those things you've unlocked. Now the last question, and perhaps the most important for this video, is is it worth the price? Now on average, when I see copies of Silent Hill 3 on PlayStation 2, it's upwards of $200, sometimes reaching closer to $500. Now I do not think this game is worth $500. It's definitely not that uncommon, and it's definitely not that like rare to warrant the price. And it's definitely not this giant mega super game that's worth spending money you don't really have to get. Silent Hill 3 is worth a decent chunk of money just because it's, you know, a PS2 game, harder to find, maybe you go to a flea market and you see it for about like 100 bucks, 80 bucks, maybe even like 150 bucks. Yeah, that PS2 copy would be worth it. Maybe you don't need the full case, maybe you just need the CD if that chops the price in half. But yeah, I, I don't think it's worth $250. So in conclusion, Silent Hill 3 is a game full of terror, really cool vibes, tons of awesome unlocks, and a killer story. Like I have to say, like in a time where games usually portrayed women in forms of gratuitous sexist like sex appeal, Silent Hill 3 kind of slaps back at that with a story that was really ahead of its time. The whole idea of a woman's right to her body standing up against a religious organization trying to take that right away from her is very relevant to what's going on today and i'm sure a lot of people could relate to that or find some kind of solace in that the gameplay might really suck at times and there might be certain areas that are just a chore to go through but there's still a lot to love about this game in regards to how to play it uh, i believe you can get it on Windows, so on like PC you might be able to get this for cheaper. I don't know much because I'm not a PC player. I told you a little bit about PS2 copies and how they can be pretty overpriced. Um, I play through the HD collection, which a lot of people hate. In fact, I got a lot of people getting angry at me last time I was talking about Silent Hill 3 because I was using footage from the HD collection. Here's the thing though, I got the HD collection for like 12 bucks. So, to me it doesn't matter that it's going to come with tons of technical issues. It's a way that I could affordably get Silent Hill 3 and play it. I've played it on PS2, I've played it on a friend's PC, and yes, the HD collection is definitely an inferior way to play it. However, for the price, it's not all that bad. If you don't mind lag spikes, desync with the actual voiceovers, and other technical issues like that, it's tolerable. However, Silent Hill 3 on PlayStation 2 is definitely the best way to play this from a technical perspective. Silent Hill 3, like the other two games we're going to be talking about, has this thing where even though it came out long before a lot of other PS2 games, it looks so much better. Silent Hill 3 looks like a very early PS3 game with its facial animations, with its environmental design. It is really nice to look at. I mean, compare it to Snake Eater, which released a year later and had a much higher budget and a bigger team. And the difference between the way Heather looks and Snake looks is like night and day. Now, of course, I understand that, like, it's a lot easier to put more emphasis on graphical fidelity when you don't have to animate and program Heather fighting the Shagohad, but we can appreciate how this game looks. Also, by the way, do you know you can actually find Snake's corpse in Silent Hill 3 and get a suppressor off of it? It's pretty morbid, but still cool Metal Gear Easter egg, right? Anyways. That's all I have to say for Silent Hill 3. 
If you can manage to get your hands on it, it's definitely worth it. There's a lot here to love. There's definitely a lot of issues with it. And it is, again, really, really scary. To the point where it's just so oppressive that it's not fun at times. However, if you want a true horror experience, go ahead and try this game however you can grab it, even if that is the HD collection. Well, this has been Pliskin, and I'll see you guys on the next week of Plicktober. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.